Perfect. All right. Uh, to start, Sam, I guess if you want to talk about where you're at right now, uh, what have you been up to? Uh, how are you involved in the lacrosse community post-college right now? Uh, just talk about uh, what's going on in your life. Mm -hmm. um, so right now I'm the graduate assistant for BC lacrosse. So that's kind of where I graduated from. So I'm staying with the team for this coming season since last year we kind of got cut short. Uh, wasn't able to finish out. Um, so I'm up in Boston right now, continuing with them and then also doing as much lacrosse as I possibly can with clinics, lessons, kind of just working with that as many, um, young lacrosse players as I can at the moment. That's awesome. So you're up in, uh, up in Boston. So how was your first year? Obviously, uh, very unorthodox in terms of the season. Are most of those players coming back? Uh, what's the sort of, I guess, the setting like going into this new year? Yeah, I mean, with last year kind of getting cut short, it was definitely like a weird um, transition. We have two of our five seniors from last year coming back, so that'll be a really good addition to our team. Um, and then we also have 11 freshmen coming in. So this is going to be a very big squad uh, on top of everything else. Um, so it, it's just kind of figuring out day by day what's going to happen in the fall, what's going to happen in for preseason, what's going to happen in the spring. There's a lot of like unanswered questions right now, which is definitely frustrating for like the staff and especially for the girls. Uh, but we're kind of like taking it day by literally day by day because that's when we're getting information. So We'll see. How's that? How's that for the summer? How much were you guys communicating to the team through the summer? Was like, all right, we're this is happening, this isn't happening. Was it just like constant, like back and forth, or you guys just like, all right, we're gonna wait and see what happens. We'll talk to you in a couple months. Yeah, I mean, it was a little bit of both in the beginning. Um, we tried to like give them as much information, but like each week, like we didn't have any more things to say to them. So like, it was pretty much just repeating and repeating saying, we don't know, we don't know, because we literally had no idea because the school wasn't giving us anything, athletic department. Um, but whenever we got new information, we would kind of reconvene, like talk to the girls. Um, but like we try to stay connected as a team as much as we could, just because this was such a, a long period of time that we weren't together. And that was definitely a, the biggest like split for the girls to not see their teammates. Um, so we try to do like Zooms and do all that stuff like, Maybe not necessarily like informative, but more like team bonding and, and kind of things like that. Definitely. I think we're all living week to week right now. It's uh, crazy for all of us. So for you, post-college, now you're obviously your alma mater, you're coaching there now. Was that always sort of the plan when you were uh, at BC? Like I, I always thought about, do I want to get into coaching or do I want to just uh, like travel a little bit, do the, the camps for the younger uh, to the youth? How did that sort of get started? Um, yeah. Yeah. I def like, I've always wanted to stay in the lacrosse world. Um, I wasn't really sure what it looked like after po like post grad. Um, initially, I was actually like considering with my best friend Dempsey like moving to Australia for like three months after graduation, and then kind of like figure things out after that. Um, but then my head coach Acacia called me like literally three days after graduation or after the final four, and was like hey, do you want to come back and be our, our grad assistant? And I was like, I love Boston. I love being on BC campus. I love the team. I love the coaching staff. And I was like, this just seems like a win-win situation for me to like come back and kind of keep doing it. Um, I'm not sure I want to stay in college coaching quite yet just because I didn't get to get a full feel of it last year. So I'm hoping I'll figure out what I want to do after uh, this year, but we'll see. Definitely. Did you, so you had no talks of it prior to post-graduation that you were possibly going to come back or get into college coaching? Yeah, no, no. Okay. Yeah. So Australia just threw that out. Yeah. Of the yeah. I had to call Dempsey after Acacia called me. I was like, uh, sorry, I'm not going anymore. Not that we had like definite plans, but that was kind of what we were hoping to do. That's all. Awesome. Hey, Sam, go ahead. <laughs> sorry. Outside of, so, Outside of like being a great player at BC, for you to get the opportunity to come back, GA, keep going to school and keep being like test out the test, the, the testing waters, the coaching waters for the first time. Was there anything that your coach kind of said that stuck out to, to that about you about why they gave you that opportunity and what they were looking for you to continue to keep doing as a coach that you were doing as a player? 
Um, yeah, I mean, she just kind of not sold me, but like kind of um, put the idea in my head that like I do kind of see the game a little bit differently, like being on the draw, being an offensive player. Like, um, she kind of made me feel a little bit more confident in my like IQ and kind of um, where she sees me and she. Definitely didn't want to see me like go into a day job where I'm not able to use my skills and like something I'm passionate about. So she knew like I wanted to be in lacrosse and this was definitely at least a bridge for me to like stay in it, whether I want to continue in college coaching or the club scene or or whatever the next step would be. But she knew this would be a good opportunity for me not to just like throw in the towel for lacrosse and, and kind of figure out what I actually do want to do because and, like, at the end of the day, it is, like, a year. I'm only a grad assistant. I'm not, like, fully, like, immersed in it, um, which allows me to kind of do what I want and kind of be a little bit flex- more flexible if I was, like, a full assistant at this point. What are you, what are you doing in terms of, of school? So if you, if you decide that you didn't want to get stay into coaching, how are you kind of using the GA spot to kind of open your opportunities afterwards if you didn't want to stay with it, depending on how this year goes? Mm-hmm. So I'm getting my master's in sports administration. So um, if I don't want to coach, I definitely, like I said, either stay in lacrosse or go in so, some sort of like administration position. Uh, I think at the college level, like I love being on the college campus. I love the feel of the college kind of whole thing. Um, so maybe even something at BC um, in the administration uh, kind of part of the department. But we'll see. <laughs> uh so I, I think like a big question now, obviously we're two, two Maryland guys and we sort of, we've been to final fours, and all of us here, but like getting to that point, like you have to go through a lot of like a leadership building and we did those classes and like one question always comes up. It's like, how do you be a leader to like your best friends? Like, how do you uh, like set yourself aside and look at it from a different perspective and be able to tell them the right thing. So I'm guess I'm asking is, going from you're elected a captain uh, and well-earned, you're well-respected on the team, and then going to a GA spot, how different was it of a jump just to be that sort of like leadership role and uh, sort of uh, have the guys or girls rely on you? Yeah, it was definitely a big um, transition for me. Not that I wasn't a leader my senior year, but it's such a different position now being like on the coaching staff in a sense. Like, um, as a player, I always felt really confident on the field because I was physically there. I could see what was going on. I knew what felt right. I knew what we were doing. So I never had a, a problem kind of almost like as a player coach, but like being on the sideline, not actually being within the play was definitely a, a different feel for me. And And a lot of these girls are like my best friends that I've been on the team with for four years. So now having to be on the other side of where it's like a dividing line from the players and coaches. So kind of crossing that line was a little bit um, odd for me because I do have these great relationships and now there's a different side that I'm seeing, um, which was tough. So it's still something I'm kind of dealing with and trying to figure out and kind of move through. But um, I also think it kind of is a little bit of a, of a, like a pro for me because I do know how the girls think. I, I do know like what they feel, what they respond to better. Um, so that helps me in my coaching, but it's still like a weird, a weird in between at this point. Yeah. Your style was it more of like uh, lead by example or uh, sort of like set the principle, set the standard and follow me. Or is it like uh, you're sort of hands-on and you're more on the, on the side, just sort of helping girls out. Yeah. Um, I think playing wise, it was always like lead by like, I'm doing this. This is how I like to get things done. And if you want to follow like, great. Um, I think now as a coach, it's more like individual stuff. Like if I see something, I'll pull someone aside. I'm not like a super vocal person. So I wouldn't be screaming across the field to like about an offensive thing. Um, It's more like one-on-one individual and I think I kind of get that from like when I'm doing my lessons or like my small clinics like that's what I enjoy um so I think I kind of transfer that into like a full team kind of practice with relationships with people on the team so you were say a senior and then you're coaching players that you were at times teammates with 
have you found it weird at all to like be in a coaching role now with like girls that you were going to practice with, like living with, going out with all that? And now that you're in a coaching role, has it been weird at all to with like certain players that you play with versus like incoming freshmen that you don't know and it's like you can treat them more formally maybe or anything like that? Yeah, exactly. Like a lot of the freshmen have a different view of me versus like the girls who are seniors this year, just because like I did spend so much time with them. Like they came over to my apartment all the time. Like we used to hang out. Um, so it's just like a different feel and not that it's bad. It's just sometimes it could cross the line where it's like, I'm a coach now and not necessarily a player, but like we still have this great relationship. Uh, but I've been lucky that it's never been like a disrespectful thing. Like, like I, they respect me, I respect them. So it's always been like a mutual like understanding of there is a difference in our positions, but we still have this great relationship. Mm-hmm. All right. So what were some of the big things uh, being at BC, just looking at your career and, and watching some of it? Obviously, we went to the Tawar Town. That's where I met you uh, in 2018, was it? And uh, just like reading about your journey and seeing some of it, uh, you got hurt freshman year uh, and then have this just amazing career. So what have you sort of taken from that, the lows, the highs of uh, obviously being a leader, but being a coach and uh, just as a person in general, just going through the mix? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I wasn't expecting much coming to BC. I like BC at the time was like near, maybe touching the top 25 um, when I was recruited there even maybe probably less when I was getting recruited, but I eventually started building and I, I was kind of um, able to have the opportunity to play and, and my freshman year, which was a great, um, I had some really good players in that senior class when I was a freshman that really kind of took me under their wing. Um, fortunately, I got hurt, so I, I missed most of my freshman year. I like just missed the red shirt kind of uh, timing. So that kind of stunk for me and was a, definitely a hard time I like hated being on the sideline that I was never I was never like someone who was hurt often um and like our team kind of we fell kind of fell off like we didn't have the greatest year and then kind of the coming next three years um we kind of just put things together and it was just an exciting time to be part of the team and see our growth from even just my freshman year to my sophomore to my junior and like every single person's confidence and like skill and just like this feeling that like we belong here um was like so amazing to see like my sophomore year when we got to our final four like no one expected that like we didn't even expect that but like as we game by game and playoffs like everyone just like was like we belong here like why why are we why are we scared why are we doing this like like we deserve to be here which was a definitely a, a dip a big switch from like where we were before to kind of now and then it definitely trans translated over into my junior and senior which which was pretty cool to see like I I never expected to play in a final four maybe not even once um so to be able to play in three was like out of this world for me (laughs) so you talked about like when you were getting recruited to BC it was like maybe a top 25 school and then you get there and you guys end up making three final fours never expected it so going back to before BC, what kind of like how serious were you about lacrosse always? Did you play other sports? And when did you kind of like decide that you were going to try to play in college? And I mean, we can get to it after after, but just kind of, I mean, just the unexpectedness of the level of play at BC, were you like a lower recruited player and then just ended up to work out great that you're in a great spot? Um, but just what was your experience with lacrosse from the beginning kind of? Yeah, um, so I'm trying to think. We, sorry, I'm blanking. What was the, the first part of the question? Just So obviously, BC wasn't, that was just like a long back question. This is our, our first one. A, a yeah. little, we're a little rusty on our end. Yeah. <laughs> but so obviously, BC, you were there three Final Fours, but getting recruited there, didn't expect to ever be going to three mm-hmm. Final Fours. Just looking back before you were going to BC, like, what was your – how were you as a player growing up? When did you get really serious? And kind of, like, what was the recruiting scene like? Like, was it, like, you just didn't have the opportunity to go to those top four or five schools or whatever that you'd think you'd go to three Final Fours with? And yeah. And kind of, like, right place, right time, ended up in the best spot situation with BC. 
how did you kind of end up there and just what was your beginning experience of lacrosse like? Got it, yeah. Um, so I kind of going off what you were saying before, I was a four, uh, three sport athlete. I played soccer, basketball, and lacrosse. Um, it wasn't until like eighth grade that I knew I wanted to play college lacrosse. Like I definitely, I still played my three sports throughout my, the rest of my high school career, but I knew like a special focus on, um, lacrosse. Like I stopped playing travel soccer. I, I only focused on travel lacrosse and like all those recruiting tournaments that were going on, um, at the time. And then, so I actually, I was fortunate enough to have a lot of options when I was getting recruited. Um, I was a little like on the higher end of my recruiting class. So, um, I did have the options to go to like the UNC's the Northwestern's like those big schools. Um, but for me personally, I, I've always kind of been the person like, I want to build something rather than kind of be a part of a legacy that was already there. Um, so that was kind of my big thing that I, I wanted to be a part of something. I wasn't sure where we would go. Uh, but I, I did want to be a part of something that was coming up that I would be able to have my like footprint in. And BC was that school. They had, they had just gotten, um, Acacia was maybe in her third or fourth year as a head coach. Um, she was bringing in a lot of good, uh, like other players like Kenzie Kent, Dempsey, Arsenal, like I saw that she was trying to build a roster, um, and I had gotten a lot of like recommendations saying how great of a coach she was, really smart, uh, very intuitive. So I kind of really wanted to be a part of that. Um, and like, obviously I said, I never imagined where we would actually end up. Um, but yeah, I guess that in that sense. Well, so, uh, you said you, you quit soccer. Was that the only other sport? Did you so you just played lacrosse in high school from eighth grade? No, I played soccer and basketball in high school too. I quit travel soccer when I was kind of decided that I was gonna do full on lacrosse. Awesome. So we talk about this on every podcast. Do you uh have a preference for like being a great athlete? A lot of people say you have to play as many sports as possible. Others say specialize. Uh, how would you feel in terms of, I guess, your experience? I, I would, I'm always on the play as many sports as possible. I played, I loved soccer. I played, I was all right on, but basketball, I like absolutely loved. I think it definitely has helped me in all of my like attacking skills, like my side to side movements and like definitely my writing and my defensive skills as a, an attacker. Um, so that's definitely, I think has, I've physically seen the translation from one to the other. Uh, so I, I, whenever anyone asks me that I'm always like play as many sports as possible, gain as much information as you possibly can from every single coach, every player, because it will only help you as, as a lacrosse player. Right. So did you uh, sort of break those up uh, yearly? Did you just play lacrosse in the spring, maybe summer, and then put your stick down and then pick it back up in the spring? How did that sort of work out? Did you break up the sports? Um, I would play. So obviously spring and summer ball. Um, I would always, I'm, I'm a big believer in taking breaks from lacrosse. Um, I, I, I've always felt like if I continue, if I do it every single day for 365 days that I'm going to get burned out and I want to be able to actually enjoy the sport as much as I possibly can. So taking like a month off or, or a few weeks definitely was always something I did after a long season. Um, even at the college level, like after a final four, your body is like dead. And I'm sure you know that like it's so exhausting so like I would put my stick away, like not even think about lacrosse for a full month and then I would start training. But um, like in high school, I would take that few months off in the in the fall, like get ready for soccer. And then throughout the winter, like I would gradually build up um, my lacrosse and winter clinics and all that stuff until the spring. I want the you when you were mentioning the, the multi sport stuff and you said like the physical stuff from basketball. But a big part of you of your success at BC, you said, was was your IQ, and that was a big reason for you getting the, the GA spot. Did you find any any like of the multi sports stuff helping, like where it's like any like mental stuff from basketball and stuff carries over into lacrosse? And just on top of that, just where did you kind of start developing that that IQ and like realize that that can help you in lacrosse as well? 
Mm, I, I think basketball has helped with I, IQ because it's such a fast-moving game. Like, you have to think on your feet, uh, look at the situation, figure it out, figure a scoring option or, or defensive skills. So I think that's definitely, like, has helped me, like, in the moment thinking and kind of going and figuring things out right away, which is lacrosse obviously has transitioned with the shot clock now, so you do have to think a little bit quicker, but um, definitely has helped me speed up my game. And I think just, like, in general for IQ, like, how I think I've built an IQ, and not that I'm always obviously learning, but I think part of me is that I watch a lot of players. Like, I'm, like, the biggest fan of Kayla Trainer. Like, she's the other assistant coach at BC. And, like, I – every skill that I've learned in the past, like, six years is from her. And, like, either mimic – I think, like, mimicking people, like, mimicking other skills, whether it's the woman's side or even the men's side. Like, I really, like, try to – like see what works and for people see what works for me and then kind of um kind of transition and kind of combine those and and just reading the game watching it as much as I possibly can um has helped me too you said six years you've been watching Kayla Trainer. if you could go back to when you first started watching her what were like the biggest things that you took away from watching her that you tried to to implement with your game and and that stuck you know I know you said you like would test and try different things but with her specifically what were like what you admire most yeah I mean my freshman year I was actually playing against it was literally my freshman year is when I tore my ACL and the game I was playing was against Kayla at, at Syracuse so like I even then like while I was taking the draw against her I'm like oh my god this girl's like right next to me like the best player I've ever been like seen um but like her her dodging skills are insane. Like her stick skills too. Like when she became on our coaching staff at BC, like she's taught us so much with like being kind of not flashy, but be, being creative with with your skills and kind of really taking advantage. Like there's so many op- more opportunities if you just kind of um, kind of tone in those little skills, like a behind the back pass or. or or a sidearm kind of shot with no look. Like she kind of opened my eyes that there is more opportunities to do things, to score, to dodge, rather than like the very upright player that I used to be like very kind of, um, not standard, but like uh, not as like creative, not as like thinking so much. Uh, She also has helped me so much on the draw too. Like my junior and senior year, like we would do the draw practice for like an hour every day and like, that just helped me so much because she just is so smart and like understands lacrosse um, so much. And I, I think that's a lot from Gary too has taught her. So like from him to her, now me, and then it keeps kind of everyone's information and their thoughts uh, are kind of transitioning from one to the other, which is cool. So yeah, you're definitely, your skills evolved tremendously when you're in college. I think I could say the same. Uh, So what did you rely on, I guess, in high school? Uh, Was it your athleticism? Was it you stuck to one type of skill, your scoring or your draw? Uh, What was sort of something that separated you early on? Um, I would probably say, like, my athleticism. Um, I was pretty – I'm definitely not as that fast anymore. (laughs) Um, But in high school, I was one of the faster on the team. So being able to use my skill and – um, definitely high school lacrosse, I wasn't had as much IQ and I think that's normal as a high school player. Um, but kind of like being really, um, intuitive and kind of reading a situation and, and kind of just like going with my gut was always, a a good thing. A lot of times it was, it was right, which was nice. Um, uh, I also had one of my best friends who plays at Richmond, who'll be a fifth year at Richmond. She played with me on my high school team. So um her and I were like connected at the hip so we were very good together um which definitely helped me kind of build confidence and kind of build like a a skill set too because we were both doing it when you when you get to college like that athletic skill gap that athletic gap that can kind of separate you always kind of closes a little bit and you got to rely on the skill more and just more on your just more separable things that are like harder to work on not as natural Is there anything that once you got to college, you realized like, oh, wow, I'm really behind on this. Or if I really work on this, like 
it'll set my my whatever wherever I'm at, I'll be able to set myself apart even more. But is there anything that you weren't working on in high school that once you got to college, whether it's getting exposed to Kayla or just the coaches at BC or just playing with better players, that once after that first freshman year and you got hurt, once you started get, getting ready for your next year, it's like, all right, I really need to focus on this and this is how I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think like my biggest thing wasn't necessarily a physical thing, but I didn't realize getting come coming from high, uh, high school to college, like, the amount of communication there is on offense. Um, Like you think of communication, you think about defense, like talking about slides and all that stuff. And like when we got, when I got to BC, like I was a mouse and I didn't talk, which was made it really hard for my coaches, like telling me to talk, talking about like, I'm going to come set a pick for you or, or a flip. So that was a really difficult thing. Or even just like asking for the ball. Like I just would put my stick up and like, hope they would see me. Like I, I, didn't realize that I needed to use my voice. I needed to like talk through people, tell them to cut through or have myself like tell a person to dodge. So I, that was like a big thing. And even up until my senior year, like sometimes I get in my own head and I don't talk. Freshman year was more that like, I didn't realize I had to. Um, But I think communication was definitely like my biggest thing that I, I've always needed to work, work on. When you say when you say you sometimes you get in your head and and don't talk, do you think that's something where it's like I'm getting frustrated? I'm just going to put my head down and and try to make a play. And do you think that's still like a slight weakness of yours, or why do you think that is sometimes? Yeah, that's definitely like my I, I that's always been like a big weakness of mine. Something my senior year was like my biggest focus. Like my biggest goal was to when I'm playing bad or when I'm having a hard time to not not get quiet and I've, I've definitely gotten a lot better at it it's I think for any athlete it's hard to to keep up this like excitement and and whatnot when when you're personally like having a hard time but it's a skill that as a leader and as a teammate you need to have um it's it's something that even as a coach now like when I see the girls doing it I'm like come on like your team needs you like how could you do that but like I was in their shoes only a few months ago or a year ago at this point. So it it's hard. It's easier to say than do sometimes. But I think if you're conscious of it and you, you're aware, um, it makes it a little bit easier to kind of see and, and notice. 100%. I think that is probably the toughest thing in, in team sports. Like if you're having – if you're not doing well individually, it's like then you start looking down on yourself like I'm not even helping this team, like mm-hmm. down on yourself. And overall, that just that's going to affect the team negatively. Uh, if you look at even earlier on or BC, uh, who were some of your like best teammates that you leaned on, and what were the some some of the traits that they sort of withheld? Um, definitely. So, like I was saying, my freshman year, we had a really great senior class, and um, someone that I like always looked up to was Sarah Manley. She was a senior. Um, she was just like an unreal athlete, like. She had torn her ACL the year before I got there. So she was recovering from ACL surgery. And, like, she was always just a very excited and energetic person. Like, even when she was having the worst day or the worst practice of her life, like, you wouldn't know. She would just work harder and she would just kind of motivate everyone else. And, like, she trusted me as a freshman that didn't speak. Like, she trusted me wholeheartedly on the offense, which definitely, like, as a as a freshman coming in, like, you don't want to be that person that everyone's like, ah, don't pass her the ball. Like who knows, like, or, or just like as a, as someone that they're unsure of, like I I felt her trust and I felt her confidence in me, which built me up so much. And then kind of like made me realize that that's what, that's what a good teammate does. That's what a good captain does is build their teammates up. Um, But I think her, and then also like even Dempsey, who's in the same grade as I am, she is like the hardest worker I've ever been. Like, I'm so glad she's, she was on my team rather than playing against her because she would be the worst person to play against. Um, Cause she like, she just always has everyone's back and kind of like really is there to help you out no matter what, whether it's offensively, defensively on the draw, she's just like all over the field and kind of everywhere, which was always a great teammate to have. You mentioned you mentioned the, the ACL tear your freshman year. Um, 
I have, I've got, I had a couple ACL tears myself. So kind of understand what that can bring. Um, so what was, what was the injury like for, I know you said you just missed the freshman year. Was it like a non-contact injury? Was it a contact injury? How did that kind of happen? And kind of what was, what was it like for you that just the experience of like, fi- like getting your season taken away for the first time and just like, was it like the hardest thing, the mental part? Was it the, the physical part? Um, just kind of what was that experience like for you? Yeah, it was, so we were playing, Can I was saying earlier, we were playing Syracuse. Um, it were literally when it was, it was a, like going to be the first big win we've ever, we had that year, my freshman year, and we were beating them and we were actually stalling the ball because this was before we had the shot clock. And like, I of course ran into the corner, like the one place you're not supposed to be during a stall. Um, and it was a non-contact. I'd cut off my, my left knee and it kind of just collapsed. And like, and I think you probably know, Sam, like, you, you know, when you do it, like there's a feeling and like kind of, I'm like laying there. I'm like, this could not have come at a worse time. Like you, you know it. And you're like, you're trying to tell yourself it's, it didn't happen. Like you don't, you wanted to think the best. Um, it was definitely a big, a big blow to me. I had a lot of friends that had done it before and I was like, that's never going to be me. I'm always like very healthy, like always stretched out, like really thought like conscious about injury prevention. And it was just kind of like a real thing where, oh gosh, is that me? Sorry. Sorry about that. It just happens, Connor, once or twice. <laughs> um, but what I was saying is it was just kind of a thing that I wasn't prepared for. It was my freshman year, like my family's back on Long Island. It was it was hard doing it on my own and kind of like motivating myself that like now I have such a different position. Like I'm on the sideline now. This isn't what I'm normally doing. Like it was it was a hard thing to kind of like feel separated from the team. Um that like I was doing this on my own. Uh, my teammates were actually really good though. Like my best friends were had all torn the ACL before too. So they knew what it was like and they kind of knew what I had needed to like comfort wise, motivation wise, which was really helpful. Like, although at the first I felt like I was doing it on my own and I was isolated, like I then kind of realized and opened my eyes that like everyone was there backing me up and kind of helping me. Um, it took a little bit, but um, it definitely, I think for the best, it, it, it worked out where I learned a lot from being on the sideline. I think even that too, like my IQ got a little bit higher because I was seeing the field and the game from a different perspective now, rather than being in the, in the middle and the chaos of it. Um, and it's just like, it motivated me to want to be better, to like kind of really focus on on my speed, on my dodging, what I needed to do and what was working for some girls, what wasn't working for others and kind of how, how I would, how I would do something if I was in that position playing. Um, yeah. With the, with like the, the mental side of things was, was it hard for you at all to, to kind of get through the injury and did you start to kind of feel like, okay, like, you just were you setting a lot of small goals and those like really helped you kind of get like momentum like all right I'm walking I'm jogging like like what was how did you kind of get over it was it just like put my head down and I'm gonna be fine or was there any doubt in your head or just what was like the mentality side like for you personally yeah I was actually a really slower process for my recovery I like didn't even start running till I was maybe 10 months out which is kind of late for most people um and it was I just had a lot of like strength things that I my legs were never really strong to begin with so like getting back my strength was difficult uh but it was it was definitely a lot of little goals like a box jump was huge for me or even just like walking or running on the the um anti-gravity treadmill was such a big thing and it's it's crazy the thought like you have to reteach yourself how to walk you have to reteach yourself how to run and like something that you've been doing for 19 years like how do you forget? Um, which was, it was mentally, it was like, I, I know how to do this. I feel okay. Like, why can't I go out there and, and practice right now? And, but on the other side too, I definitely had some nerves and kind of anxiety that like, I wanted to do it correctly and do the recovery correctly. So this would never happen again. Cause mentally and physically, like 
this doing this again was would be really really hard for me because I know I know everything that has to happen I know like the pain the kind of the stress um of it all so I took a little bit longer time and then even when I came back and was back I had a brace on it was mentally wise like getting the ball like dodging was such a big like hill that I needed mountain actually that I needed to like get over like getting the ball like even now sometimes where my like legs are tired I'm like if I dodge right now like I don't want to get hurt like that's like the biggest fear for me um so that was something I struggled with for a while and then after like you probably know like after a while you just you just flow and you just like you don't even think about it and that's like where I needed to be in order to feel comfortable but it, it definitely took a while even like beginning of games like I needed to get into a flow where like my thought process wasn't going yeah, that's pretty that's I mean it obviously helps that you were at college and they could like walk you through like you really need to like take your time but like for me I did two in high school and it was just like six months I'm gonna be yeah. back like I need to play my next football season like I need yeah, to be yeah. back and I ended up redoing it a couple of times how long how long did you end up waiting until you like actually came back full to your team I waited so I didn't start running till 10 months and then after when I run, started running like things kind of progressed quickly so I started in preseason I think like at 11 months like that's when I started playing like it was definitely I wasn't doing a full practice I would do a couple of drills here and there and like each week I would build up to like maybe I playing 45 minutes of the practice to an hour then two hours so it was a slow progression but within that one month it kind of came pretty quickly just because I did want to play like I want I was ready to get back out there um and then even like my first few games my sophomore year like I would go in and then if we were winning or, or what happened, like I would get taken out. So it was a lot of like slow things. I wasn't getting like thrown in into the water without like being prepared. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely worth taking the time on, on those things though. Um, was there, was there anything with the with last thing with the ACL stuff? Um, was there anything once you once you got back where it was like a moment where it was like all right like I feel completely back to myself was like scoring a goal or like went beating a dodge and then once you did get back fully yourself you talked about you were like kind of scared about doing it again a lot was there anything extra that you added on added into your routines to try to like even emphasize that injury prevention stuff even more? Um. Yeah. I mean, my first game back it was against Holy Cross and I like. I felt so weird being on the field again because, like, I hadn't been on the field in so long. Um, and I think just, like, the first half, I think, all together is just, like, this is so natural to me. Like, I'm, like, right back in it. Like, it didn't feel like I skipped a beat, which was so good for me. And, like, mentally-wise, like, I kind of needed that as, like, a little bit of a boost. Um, and I think now, like, as, like, injury prevention-wise, I'm definitely really cautious about – uh, warming up beforehand like I do a lot of uh, exercises that my trainer gives me with like bands and all that stuff and kind of making sure that I'm prepared every time I'm going on the field I'm not just putting on my cleats and going out there because I do I really would hate to do it again and I've had even since my surgery like I've had scopes on my knee I've had a few like scar tissue removal so it hasn't been like fine and smooth sailing since I got the surgery so it's always kind of been something that like I've had to be conscious of I had to think about uh but um I've been lucky enough knock on wood that I haven't had any big injury since yeah 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 definitely going into uh, more your routine you talk about your workouts uh how has that progressed since like you were in high school I would say what uh like the professional now you have to do it on your own uh, in order to get ready. Uh, how did it progress in high school uh, to college? Was that a big focus of yours, like off the field stuff and to get ready or? Um, yeah, it definitely has built since um, as uh, my career has gone. College, high school is actually, I was able to like train and kind of lift with a, my trainers back on Long Island, which has been always been a really great thing for me. And then college obviously is a little bit different it's a lot more sprinting like lifting it's a little bit more scheduled where you're doing it with your team you're testing everything um 
which I was used to kind of in my, in my training thing. It was just a different feel and kind of like, um, almost more of a, an importance on it because it helps with injury prevention. It helps with your skill, your speed and all that stuff with that will translate to your lacrosse career. Um, and then now that I don't have a schedule, I don't have a coach like telling me to be at lift at 10 30 or, or, or at conditioning, um, since graduation, it, it's definitely been hard, uh, up in Boston. I don't have my trainers from home now, so I'm, I'm doing everything on my own. I'm trying to figure out stuff. And, and then I've, I've been lucky that they're able to send me stuff, but especially now with COVID, like there isn't many gyms open. There's not many places for me to go. Um, so training is, has definitely been hard. I've been trying to do as much like lacrosse specific training, whether it's shooting, footwork and all that stuff right now, just cause I, I have the access to it. Um, like hoping lifting and all that stuff will come soon, but just trying to keep myself as like active and, and ready as possible. Um, just cause like for our pro league, hopefully coming up next summer and then also team USA, I have to be kind of ready at any moment for our tryout that will hopefully be scheduled soon. Um, so we'll see, um, with that stuff. You guys are going this, it got moved again for you guys. It wasn't, it's now in December. Yeah. Yeah. Early end of November into December. I think it's like that last week of November. Gotcha. So if we're, let's say we're in, uh, November and you got to prepare for late November, uh, what would be your sort of focus and, uh, that's like most important to you to getting, uh, to being at hundred percent on the field. Like if we were to take all your workouts, say you're running, you're lifting, uh, your stick work and like cut that into 10% of it, however many hours cut that into 10%. What do you think is the most important thing for you to get ready, uh, for a trial like that? Um, I would definitely say like, my stick, I think it's probably the most important. I think physically, like I've been working out enough that I, I feel in shape. I feel ready. I think the most important is like being able to play against someone because I haven't been able to do that. Like I haven't dodged on a defender in maybe six months or, or so, or, or since I was at my last U S tryout. Um, so that I think being prepared skill wise, definitely is a, is a more thought in my head and my shooting, right? Like, I don't want to like get, get there and shoot at the goalie stick because I haven't shot in a goalie in however long. So I think preparing that more um, just because that will translate a little bit more um, versus like my physical skills and my physical uh, ability since I've been kind of keeping up with that stuff as much as I can. I guess uh, I want to ask just because – I uh, just learning from these podcasts and like going and we talked to a couple of trainers and they talked about uh, like a spectrum of like, if you play more sports, uh, it helps you become a better athlete. But if you want to specialize, it helps you be more skilled at that sport. And from that, uh, that spectrum, do you, do you believe that lacrosse is more of a skilled sport or is it more of like an athletic sport? Um, that's interesting. I, I think thinking about it, like, to be a good lacrosse player, you have to be an athlete. To be one of the best, you have to have really good skill. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously be an athlete as well. So I think in that, I think you, hmm. To, definitely, I think skill will help you get, like, reach the next level to, like, being that part. But you have to have, like, all that athleticism already with you in that definitely definitely not a black and black and white answer on that one yeah yeah it's, it's but tough. Yeah. when you when you go say say you've got an hour or 30 minutes and you're gonna go work on your stick work for 30 minutes at bc or whatever do you have any like specific routine where it's like all right i've got 30 minutes i've got 40 minutes i'm gonna do like like a couple seven meter shots i'm gonna like get a couple balls like five yards out just dial it in just hit the wall for five minutes if you have like constrict amount of time, do you have any like go to routine where it's like, all right, I'm gonna go do like ten minutes of this wall ball drill, then like do like this like dodging drill for ten minutes? If you have like very limited time, like what's your like go to like bread and butter? Yeah, I usually like whenever I play lacrosse, like I'll start with as much like I'll do like ten minutes of wall ball skills as much as I possibly can, and then um, like 
just like simple shooting stuff to get my body moving, like alley alley dodges, like shooting down the alley, kind of working on that stuff. And then like for that, for however long, and then if I have time, like going from behind and doing like a dodge and then shooting around the crease. But like if that's, I'm usually like I try to go, if I'm going to go and play, like I like to have a, a kind of a, like schedule not a schedule but like a plan of what I want to get done for the day like whether it's all up top stuff or all behind or working on like feeding or or whatnot like I I like being able to go go out my backyard and like shoot around for for however long but I definitely at the end of the day I want to get something out of it so like for me personally like that's something I like to do is that I'm going to work on just footwork today or, or just shooting from the outside um so like at the at the end, I I know I actually worked on a skill. I wasn't just like fooling around in the backyard shooting for like the top corner every time. Right. Yeah. So I guess you said you were teaching kids, uh, obviously this year and throughout. Uh, what's like uh, when you're trying to like lay a foundation? What are some like I guess drills or something that you preach to them? Hey, if we can do this right, obviously like passing and catching number one. Mm-hmm. But are there like certain things you tell them? that you want to focus on in order to get better, like tangible things? Um, I, whenever I'm doing lessons, like I always talk about shooting form a lot. Um, I think a lot of younger kids, like they get away, not get away, but they, they are, they're shooters and, but they not necessarily have the greatest form, which will kind of catch up with them. I think as they get older. So like trying to like really focus on getting your hands off your body, kind of really getting that front elbow up working on your follow through is definitely something I kind of preach. And whenever I do a lesson, like I say to the girls maybe 10 times in one single drill about their shooting form, um, just trying to build those small mechanics and kind of make it muscle memory rather than like them, like being a robot trying to do it. Right. So if you were to bring yourself back, obviously everything's kind of worked out and one of the best players in the world. But if you were to go back to like 13 years old, uh, what would you tell yourself to do differently, whether that's skills wise or whether that's just as as, as an athlete uh, that you would try to get better when you were 13? Um, I think more mentally was like an issue for me. Like I put a lot of stress on myself, like what with recruiting, with kind of playing my skills. And like I would kind of beat myself up a lot about every game that I, I didn't have a goal in or I didn't have a point. And I'm like, as I got older, I'm kind of realizing that like lacrosse, that's not what lacrosse is about. It's kind of, it's obviously a team sport and like, and not putting so much pressure on myself and kind of letting uh, myself like be a little bit more um, like, um, it just kind of like figuring out that like, I don't have to be a certain person. I don't have to be like, fit a role fit a mold of a lacrosse player like I could be just good at the draws or or just making sure that like I knew that I I didn't have to do certain things to to like be considered a good lacrosse player or 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 be a good athlete um and like recruiting wise like not putting so much pressure like that was like the most stressful time of my my life as a a freshman and sophomore in high school like trying to pick what school I wanted to go to um when I didn't even like know anything about what college would be um so I think kind of just like taking a step back and like being a little bit more present in everything um would definitely be some advice I would give with that with the same same question to where with your success you've had what and you could talk yourself at 13 what would be the the number one thing you'd tell yourself to to like definitely focus on and do the same like this really helped me like you got to keep doing like make sure you stick with this Um, I would just say like keeping your stick in your hand as much as possible. Like even now post college, like every time I do a lesson, like I have my stick in my hand as much as I can. And like, I think that just builds your confidence in your stick work. Even if you're not like going out there and doing blah, blah, like literally just walking around your house with your stick, which kind of sounds weird, but like just having that, like the comfort and like the um, feeling of your stick in your hand, like it just makes you a better stick handler, but like a comf- 
comfort in the the fact that you you've practiced you've done so much with your stick um whether it's shooting like cradling or literally wall ball like that was definitely a big thing growing up like I've had a I had a lot of friends um that play lacrosse that were literally my neighbors so like whenever we wanted we could just like go out and have a catch in the backyard or, or whatnot so like being able to continue a lot with lacrosse and not make it like a job but make it something you want to do and kind of um something you enjoy with with where you're at where you're at now and just as much as you're exposed to the lacrosse world from kids to club kids to college kids now are there any pieces of advice or recommendations that you hear a lot that you disagree with or kind of think are bad pieces of recommendation um I don't think so I I think like something that like I hear a lot whether people like and I think it's just two different philosophies like whether people should be good at like lefty and righty or just be like good with their dominant hand um I think that's a interesting like thought process I think a lot of people like have like the idea that you should just be good with one hand my personal belief is that you should be good with both your non-dominant and your and your dominant just because like I've even talked to defenders in this idea that like defending a player that can go equally both hands is so much harder than defending a player that's very one-handed which is pretty obvious that like it's so much easier, harder for them to defend. So like making yourself as, as much of a threat as possible, um, obviously is like the better, better choice for you. Did you, did you always have like a, like a good offhand or did you, was that something that you didn't realize was really important until college? Um, I would say I'm, I'm a righty. So I, I would always kind of like, even in high school, I, I was always pretty com- comfortable in my left hand just cause like, my coaches growing up, my youth coaches like always harped on it, which um, exci- like I'm happy that they did because it, it just made me a more dynamic and um, like threatening player to be able to do both. Obviously not as skilled as I am with my right, but like enough that I, I feel confident in catch and throw and shoot with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so like all athletes, I think we have times that we sort of fail. Uh, I, w- I wouldn't call it failure, but a learning experience uh, that sort of later led on to success. What was something like a defining moment for you in your career, whether it was younger that you learned something or uh, older? Um, I think my like most defining moment, like kind of, a, it was a pretty much a failure for me personally. It was, I was um, the U19 for US. I was, I tried, had dried out for the team and I was actually, lucky enough to make the training team. Um, but unfortunately I was named as an alternate. So I wasn't, I did travel with the girls to Scotland, but I had to sit on the, like the fan sideline. I wasn't really able to be involved, which was so, um, like upsetting for me just cause like, once again, like I wasn't used to being on the, especially in high school, like I wasn't used to being on the sideline and kind of being that person to, like, that has to be, um, kind of watching from the outside and going into like I was a senior in high school at the time like going into my freshman year of college like it it was a big kind of like oh gosh like do I belong at BC do I do I belong playing at the D1 school if I was not even good enough to be on the field for the U19 and it was definitely a, a tough kind of like realization that if I do want to be at this elite level do if I do want to play like and compete with these girls that are, are, are on the team. Like I have to try harder. I have to be like a better player, a better teammate kind of really be want to be there. And I think that was definitely a defining moment for me where when I got to college, like I had just not been playing and I wasn't sure if I was going to play when I got to BC, like nothing certain as a freshman coming in, even as a, as a, upperclassmen like who knows what's going to happen for the next year um so I think that was like a big motivation for me and and I use that as a fire that whole summer preparing for for freshman year preparing for my run test for the the lifting test and all that stuff that because I I wanted to be there I wanted to be on the field I wanted to be part of the team um so I think that kind of 
really got me going to be able to do that. How long, once you got to BC, how long did it take you to kind of get over that like imposter syndrome where it's like, I'm not sure if I belong here. I'm not sure. It was just like, okay, you got there and I'm starting to make plays and I'm better than a lot of these girls. Or was there anything that just you kind of helped you realize like I, I do belong here? Um, I don't think it, I like kind of realized that I felt like I belonged there until like halfway through like my freshman season. So like maybe a game or two before I, I got um, my I got injured. So like it took a while. Like I wasn't very confident in the fall, like even preseason, like they off like I at the time like I was considered like a, a starting attacker and they would the coach would say like our attackers go in I would stand on the sideline because I didn't know if I belonged out there or, or if I was supposed to go just because I, I didn't feel like I was supposed to be out there and I think it wasn't until I got to playing and I saw like the confidence from my and the trust um from my teammates that like I did feel like Maybe maybe I should be here. Maybe I do have a role on this team that like could help us be successful. Definitely. Uh, just finding motivation as an athlete is huge. And uh, for you, are you a? Do you set goals? Do you just look at? Uh, just find motivation elsewhere. Do you, have your goals evolved each and every year? Uh, how do you go about that before like a season starts or anything like that? Mm-hmm. In college, I did a lot of goal setting each year. I would actually sit down with Kayla trainer and kind of figure out like what I need to do as an individual and what I like my team goals too. So like, cause those obviously coincide with one another. If you're doing good as an individual, your team will be doing good and, and vice versa. Um, so that was definitely a big thing for me. Um, and we try to do it as specifically as possible because I'm like someone that can kind of get lost, um, if there isn't something that like I'm actually striding for. And then now kind of post-college, it's definitely been a little bit different because you're, you're not necessarily, um, shooting for like specific things. It's more like being prepared or, or kind of like working on that stuff. Um, I think now like team USA and potentially hopefully being on the world cup team. That's definitely like my biggest um, goal I have right now, my biggest motivator. So like every time I train, every time I shoot, that's like something that's hanging over my head um, and like making sure that I'm keeping myself accountable in that sense, because I want to be there on that team um, come next summer. With those, the setting like personal goals and team goals. So you're, your junior year, you won the Tour Town in 2018. How would you compare, not to like bring up any sore subjects or anything, but just like, I feel like it could be valuable for kids. How would you compare like the joy of like winning the Tour Town, personal goal, best, best girl in women's across, NCAA women's cross that year versus losing the national championship? Like how would you kind of weigh the, the positive personal goal of winning the Tour Town versus the negatives losing in the final four or losing the championship as a team goal. Yeah. I mean, individually being able to win the Toronton was obviously like the dream of any lacrosse player. And I was obviously so honored and I'm, I'm still so humbled by the, the award. Um, and I think, but the fact that like, I've gone to three final fours and I've never won is the most upsetting thing I've ever like experienced. So like I would trade anything to win a final four with my team. Like I don't care about any individual award. Like I think being able to win a national championship would have been like the, the height of my career. Um, and I think for anyone, honestly, like that's like the, uh, Torrenton's the dream, but like, the final four or winning a national championship is why I played lacrosse and why I wanted to go to college. Um, and like why I chose to play D1 because I, I wanted to win a national championship. Never thought I would get there, but like I've gotten so close so many times that like it's like right under my fingertips. And, and I was, it's, it's definitely been, it's a weird thing. Cause like, you're so excited that you, that I was able to win the tour and, but like, I, I wish like so much that it was the other way around. 
Mm-hmm. All right, Connor. Start start so I guess, a little bit. Yeah, start wrapping it up. Uh so I guess jump into other things, but uh like I guess in the last five years, uh, whether it's been this past uh, this past year due to COVID and uh, taking the time, but has there has your habits changed as an athlete, as a person uh, that you have like focused on, like like goal setting or stuff like that, that's helped you uh, be better uh, day in day out? Um, I would say definitely like personal health. So like now as postgraduate, like. I focus on like what I'm eating each day. I focus on how much sleep I'm getting, like when I'm working out my recovery um, a little bit more just because I have the time. And then I also like know how much I need it as like not being a collegiate athlete anymore. Like I'm only 22, but like I am getting kind of old. And after each game, like I'm getting tired and my body's beat up. So like, I I think that physically, like, knowing my body and kind of knowing what I need to be the best athlete I can um, has definitely been something that I, I've changed since post-college um, to now. What, have you, what would you say is the, the most beneficial new thing that you've changed in the past couple of years, if you could pick one? Um, definitely sleeping more. Sleeping more? Yeah, yeah. Not sleeping a lot in college? Um, not necessarily, like we would have really early workouts in the morning. Um, and then I would be up late doing schoolwork in the, during the week on the, in, at night. So like, and like, I just would not get as much as I needed to and like would sleep during the day, like taking naps throughout classes. So that wasn't necessarily like the best thing for me, I think. Yeah. So what's a, what's a daily sleep? How many hours? Right now? Yeah. Um, I sleep like seven and a half each night. That's pretty solid. But it is crazy thinking about, like, I guess I guess we are old because thinking about when we're in high school, you play like three games a day at a summer <laughs> tournament, and you think that's normal. And nowadays, if you played a, oh like even God. two games, it would be yeah, yeah, and like the hot summer sun too. Like you're, like I would actually die if I played three games in a in the summer. Yeah, truly insane. So I guess um. In terms of like your success and what's gotten you to here today, uh, I think a lot of it, like I, I credit to like just mentors, not even knowingly, but a lot of people that I went to and relied on, whether that's family or friends, were there mentors, mentors for you that you leaned on growing up? Yeah, I actually, um, one of my good friends and, and mentor for my entire career was Shannon Smith. Um, she had played at Northwestern and she had She's from West Babylon. She's a few years older than me. She won the Torrenton um, at Northwestern, like was the epitome of like the best lacrosse player when I was growing up and like someone everyone knew. She was like the Taylor Cummings over time. And mm-hmm. it was just someone that like, she took me under her wing, like even when she was in college and I was just like an eighth grader in, in, in middle school, like we would go and shoot or she would come and like, we would do wall ball together. Like she, she just took me, um, under her wing and and I like I give so much to her because she was just like always wanted to do it I I, it was never something like I would text her and like back to bugger she she would be asking me to go do that stuff like she wanted me to succeed and she knew obviously knew how to do it because she was doing it for herself um and I, I definitely like even now when I'm I'm having trouble or or if I'm like even when I was in high college like oh, how do I beat this defender? Like, I would look, talk to her or get her perspective and kind of see what she thought. And it was just a different different outside perspective from, like, our BC bubble that that helped me throughout my career. And like I said, like, we're really good friends. Like, I see her a ton. Um, she was one of my coaches for my travel. Like, she's been throughout my life the, this entire time, and it definitely made me who I, went, who I am today. Right. Have you was, have you taken any yeah. have you taken any girls under your wing like that? Like, uh, kind of, have you done that at all? Um, I've definitely I'm trying. I've been try like I not necessarily as much as she did. I think it's a little bit of a different time with yeah. social media and kind of like all that stuff. Um, but I I definitely try to like do some of the things that like I 
have seen. Like, she's role modeled a lot of, like, great leadership and great mentorship to me. And I've definitely tried to translate that into my own kind of mentoring and kind of friendship with with people. You said with, like, social media now these days, it it makes it a little, I guess, it take a little bit of responsibility off of your play where kids just have so much so much access to to different videos or just watching other girls are there any social media accounts out there that you follow and think are really good whether it be to get lacrosse content or just like you said you, you're pretty focused on just the whole life wellness where it's just like you know, like mind body it's all connected but just in terms of social media accounts do you have any favorite lacrosse accounts that you tell girls to follow or just life wellness accounts that you really enjoy um I wouldn't necessarily say I do I'm actually not a huge social media person I'm like awful with my Instagram um so I'm like other than just like looking up like food recipes like I'm not really on it too much um I obviously follow like all of like the inside lacrosse even like the PLL like even just like watching like highlights or like really cool film of like players whether it's at the pro level even like some of the high schoolers are like absolutely crushing it like like I was even saying earlier like mim- being able to like see that and mimic it and kind of translate it into your own game has helped me and um I think a lot of people do that too and I- I've definitely said that to some of the younger players that I do lessons with and I, I kind of coach um to like to watch as much lacrosse as you possibly can mm-hmm with looking at lacrosse and the future a little bit, where where do you see lacrosse in 10 years for women's lacrosse specifically, best case scenario? And if you had a magic wand with unlimited resources, how would you make sure, how would you plant the seed and, and make sure it gets there? Um, I would hope to see uh, women's lacrosse in the Olympics for hopefully 2028. Um, and then also like a great, pro league so right now our our WPLL has folded so we're kind of like trying to figure out what's kind of the next steps for us and I think realistically we we need the the resources that we don't have right now and which I think any woman's sport is at this kind of um dead end where you have the players you have the teams but you don't have the resources or the fans to kind of support the league and that's something that we need to build a bigger base for because we do have that younger de- generation. We do have those young girls who love like the pro women's league and we kind of have to build it past that now to the, to the other, the other fan base that we need. Um, and I, I'm hoping that that will eventually kind of figure out, we'll get the right people um, in charge and kind of leading our, our leading the charge. So I'm hoping in the next 10 years that we have somewhere somewhere to play each year and like kind of hopefully at some point make it where we can make a living off of um, playing lacrosse. Definitely. Is there anything is there anything that if you could make any changes and like whether it be getting more sticks in, hand, in hands at a younger age or just like what do you think could could change or help if you had the the power? I would say just like more visibility for your women's lacrosse, more broadcasting of women's games, more kind of support from um, like the big, big broadcasters like ESPN and, and kind of just like building, building our platform along with the men. So we're kind of able to be on the same stage as them and kind of being able to do and have the same exact kind of fan base and in and, and that, in that sense. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So we'll go, uh, we got last couple questions here. Um, so I guess we're still in the COVID times. Uh, <laughs> so I guess what is your uh, biggest takeaway, uh, biggest like positive takeaway uh, from these times? Um, I've kind of used this time to like really be a little bit more in the present. I think in the past, I'm always like trying to thinking about like my next trip or my next clinic or all this stuff, like trying to overthinking things. And and this time, as much as it's been very chaotic and and a lot really hard for most people, like I've used it as a time to like kind of re figure out like who I am and kind of, and kind of spend time with my family, spend time with my friends and, and kind of, um, 
work on myself as a lacrosse player, as an athlete, as a person, and kind of use this use use this time to to get something out of it rather than being kind of isolated for five months and and feeling like the same person after. Like I, I wanted, I came into it knowing that like I was gonna use this time to like be better when we're hopefully done. Is there is there anything that you are with looking towards the future a little bit or have recently started to try, but anything that you're openly experimenting with or want to try in the future to help yourself as a person or athlete? Um, I'm doing a lot like more, like I was saying too, like healthy cooking. So like that stuff that will definitely help me. Um, just like thinking more about my like overall health in general like I read a lot more now I do a lot more like um like yoga and all that stuff so like more um like self-set things what's your uh what's your like staple go-to healthy healthy meal lineup for a day um I love eggs so I always eat eggs in the morning um usually like uh I change up for lunch. Like, uh, I like rice cakes a lot. So I like do sandwiches on rice cakes or, um, or like a salad or, or some sort of like meal. I don't know. And then at dinner, I'll change it up a lot. Like last night I made sausage, sausage and peppers, which is really good. Um, uh, but kind of just like being creative and like making sure that I'm getting the much, as much nutrients and, and kind of protein and all that stuff as I can. Mm-hmm. Love it. Uh, what is your favorite purchase under a hundred dollars? My favorite, oh gosh, mm-hmm. it past, might be in the past uh, six months. The past, what the past, the past month? six months that's brought you the most joy? Oh, oh god, um, wow, <laughs> this is definitely not under a hundred, but I got a puppy, but that doesn't count. But I would probably say my hydro flask, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> not really that much joy, but. I love having water. Oh, I, I like that one. Hydration is key. Have you lost a ton of those or is that your I, first? I don't, that's my first, no, that's my first one, but it's like already, it's only like a few months in. it's like dented and scratched and all that stuff. I like don't take care of it, which is not great. It's only 10 bucks. You can get another one if you need to. Yeah. Um, any, let's see. We, yeah, I'm trying to see if we got any go-to questions that we missed here. Um, any, what's your, so pre-game day, any 30, like 24 to 36 hours, any like routines that you need to do like before a game to get ready? Um, I'm not very superstitious. Um, usually like Dempsey and I would do like wall ball for like 10 minutes beforehand and then pretty much he would braid my hair and that's pretty much it. But yeah. <laughs> okay. And... Favorite thing to do outside of lacrosse when you're feeling overwhelmed or just unfocused to kind of dial back in? Um, I would go, th- I like going to the beach a lot. Like, beach. yeah. All right. And then, Connor, unless you got anything, any, any last ones here, we can uh, hit the closer billboard question. <laughs> billboard it up. All right. All right. So, Sam, if you could put one thing on a billboard for billions of people to see every day to kind of brighten their day, get them motivated, whatever it may be. What would you put on that billboard? Oh God. Oh, I would put a picture of my puppy. Your puppy? Yeah. Cause he's so cute. Uh, okay. Any, word? any, any words on, next to the puppy? <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe like just smile or something like that. Something cheesy. Uh, yeah. All right. I like it. I like it. Simple. Connor. <laughs> no, this is great. This has been awesome. Uh, we appreciate that your time and uh, a lot of good stuff for uh, kids to hear. So thank you. First, thanks for having me, guys. It was awesome. Yeah, thanks a lot, Sam. Um, All before right. we go, WPLO <laughs> it folded. I wasn't aware of this. Yeah, just re- um, a few weeks ago. Really? Yeah. Oh my God! I didn't. I, I didn't. I wasn't aware. Yeah, they sold it um, to a different company, I think. So it's still running. There, it's like in the works of what's gonna ha- kind of happen with it. Okay, gotcha. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah.
All right. Well, Sam, thank you again. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll see you around in Boston sometime. Um, yeah. Or as we, you know, hopefully we uh, get things going a little bit more here in the Boston area, out the long, outside the Long Island area. But we'll definitely keep you posted everything. And, and thanks a ton for the time. Um, best of luck with the season this year. And, uh, yeah, just okay. smile with, with, <laughs> with a puppy next to it. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, awesome. guys. All right. Thanks, thank you. Bye. See ya.